This is the River Hawk Report for Monday, December 7th, 2009. A good weekend for UMass Lowell Athletics. Three teams looking to bounce back to shake off losses and get back into the win column. And that's exactly what happened. Basketball, both men and women, were winners. And so too was River Hawk hockey. Now the details, and we start on the ice of the Sangus Arena. The Minutemen of UMass Amherst on the other bench. A pulsating performance. Scintillating. That's a word Coach Blaze McDonald likes. And it is a word that is appropriate in this case. The Riverhawks, down two goals early in the second period, came back in dominating fashion. The Riverhawks winners 5-3 the final. That's tough to play against. That's that's what we've been lacking when we haven't been playing well, is our poise and persistence and puck protection and puck security skills in the offensive zone. We get impatient, throw it to the net, and bang, it's a turnover. That's the way we need to continue to play, and we can really build off this. And the stars were many. David Valerani had the hat trick. That's three goals. And they were big goals, as a matter of fact. One tied the game, another put the Riverhawks on top, and the final one provided the insurance. Nick Schaus had four assists, Jeremy Daner had a goal that lit the spark, and Nevin Hamilton solid between the pipes. You know, to, to win tough games, your best player's got to play the best, and you know, Val played phenomenal, but Nevin was really solid. We had a lot of guys play great. Jeremy Daner was a machine out here tonight, so it was a, it's a real tribute to the team because... It didn't start well for the hockey club. They did play well in the first period, but a power play in the final seconds of the period had given you Mass Amherst a 1-0 lead. And then early in the second period, the visitors had increased that lead to 2. Yeah, we faced a lot of adversity, and it's easy to uh, have a lot of self-doubt creep in. It's a tough league, you know, and you've got to you've got to stay in your moments, and this team uh, deserves a lot of credit for their mental toughness. But it was in that second period that everything changed. It's the best period we played in the second period. We were dominating. Oftentimes, it looked like we had a power play 5-on-5 five five in the offensive zone. We had guys getting after pucks, so that was a great, that gave us a lot of confidence. Daner holds, fakes, looks, comes in, fires, scores! Jeremy Daner snipped off the wrist shot, found the back of the net, sounded like he'd hit the Down short the right side point. post. Sends it into the slot, bouncing puck, Valerani turns, fires, scores! Valerani the goal! And the River Hawks have tied it in. You know, two. everyone, uh, you know, brought their best game today, and, uh, you know, we're getting more, sh- more shots on net, more guys driving the net, so uh, things worked out well tonight. Holmstrom stick handles to the left point, now top of the slot. Slides into the slot, shot knocked down, loose puck, backhander by Butt, loose in the crease, score! Paul Worthington pokes it home, and the River Hawks have a three to Singer. Put it across in front, and it is tipped in by Michael Marcou, and we are tied at Now to Caveney. Caveney out of the corner, feeds Daner across to Schaus. Schaus, wrist shot, deflected, loose. Shot by Valerani, score! River Hawks take a 4 3 lead. Yeah, yeah, the guys get on me a lot uh, for not shooting the puck more, so, uh, you know, they got on me and I started shooting, and uh, things, uh, things worked out good. Now, nice tip by Shu, got it to Valerani. Valerani into the attack zone, stick handles, fire, scores! David Valerani, the hat trick! Bing, bang, boom, Riverhawks, two goal lead, first time tonight. 5-3, oh, gypsy doodle and put it home. David Valerani, stunning in that rush. I usually I don't shoot the puck too much. I looked, uh, you know, just to the other guys on the ice. But, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, tonight I shot the puck a little more and things worked out well. And as the game progressed, the Riverhawks' confidence increased. Despite giving up a power play goal early in the game, the penalty-killing unit played extremely well. And I, I think we started to kill, do a good job killing penalties. And that just lifted the whole spirits of the bench. You know, we can still play aggressive. We don't want to have to be killing penalties. But if we take a penalty, we know we can get it done. And I thought that was a big momentum uh, swing for us. And the game may have been decided not by a goal, but rather by a third period penalty kill. At the time, the score was still tied at three. And the Riverhawks were down two men. But we had guys willing to sacrifice. Huge block by Nick Schaus. Guys did a great job in that penalty kill. And that was, uh, that was huge. They took a timeout. And uh, that, that was a big turning point in the game. Again, the UMass Lowell Hockey Riverhawks will be back in action this coming weekend. Couple of games, both home, both against Princeton. That's Friday night and Saturday. Make a note, afternoon, a 4 o'clock start. And we also note the Cell Phones for Soldiers campaign got off to a good start on Saturday. Some 50 or more cell phones have been collected. The campaign will continue throughout the remainder of the hockey season. The phones are recycled. The proceeds go to calling cards for American troops overseas. 
The basketball teams, both men and women, were winners, and in a big way, double digits. Both hosted St. Anselm at the Costello Center. We'll look at the women first. UMass Lowell defeated St. A's 53-34. Jen Valenti hit for 14 points and grabbed six rebounds. Janae Bushner and Bianca Simmons were also in double digits, each hitting for 10 points. Riverhawk women are now 5-2, and 3-2 two, and two in the Northeast 10 Conference. They host Franklin Pierce on Tuesday. The men's basketball team were winners as well. The Riverhawks led by a big game from Kyle Keola defeated St. Anselm 88-78. Keola hit for a career-best 32 points. Kevin Carr added 17. The Riverhawks, who had been struggling from behind the three-point arc, went 12 for 24 from long range. That's 50%. That's good shooting. The Riverhawks are now 5-2, and 3-2 and of the Northeast 10 Conference. They will host Franklin Pierce. That'll be Tuesday night at the Costello. The indoor track season has begun. The Riverhawks at the Northeastern Husky Winter Carnival and some terrific performances. Jackie Barrett won the shot put with a distance of 45 feet, three and three quarter inches. The throw provisionally qualifies her for the NCAA championships. Amy Delgado won the 400 meters in a time of 59 and won 100th seconds. And on the men's side, Dante Brown won the 400 meter dash in a time of 48.93. The meet featured athletes, by the way, from divisions one, two, and three. And that's the Riverhawk Report for Monday, December 7th, 2009.